Did you know the luggage brand Tumi has diverted almost 1 million plastic bottles from landfill by using recycled plastic to create their bags? I'm Daniel Hartz, and this is the Sustainability Champions podcast, where we highlight the people, ideas, and innovations that are protecting and healing the planet. Today, my guest is Victor Sands, the creative director at Tumi. And Tumi manufactures high-end suitcases. They're innovative by nature and sustainable by choice, which I think is an awesome tagline. And with their latest announcement, Tumi is protecting the things that matter most, the things you own and the planet you travel to see. So I'm really looking forward to, to learning about Tumi's sustainability plans and what they're doing with their latest product lines. Thank you very much for joining me, Victor. Oh, Daniel, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, really, to tell you what we got going. Yeah, uh, as am I. Where are you taking the call from? I'm actually um, here at my home studio in New Jersey. Excellent. And so today what, I, what I'd love to do is talk about really three things, broadly speaking. I'm sure we'll go uh, all over the place. But first of all, uh, you have a very exciting announcement about your latest sustainable product lines. And then in general, Tumi is doing a lot to be environmentally friendly. So uh, I'd love to hear what you're doing as a brand. Uh, and then finally, how do you actually design a new product with sustainability in mind? So these are the three kind of things that I, I'm really looking forward to digging into. Uh, first of all, just to give a little bit of background and context, what problem is it that you're solving as a brand by making your luggage more sustainable? And I think... For me, I've been with the brand um, now for roughly about 16 years. And one of the mm -hmm. things that brought me to the brand was that the brand really looked at product design, not just from an aesthetic standpoint, but from a functional standpoint and a longevity standpoint. And as kind of the, we've always been sustainable. I guess for us as a brand, we've always looked at ourselves uh, as sustainability as that longevity factor. Mm -hmm. And as the idea of sustainability became more kind of on the forefront and the topic that people were paying more attention to, which I think is fantastic, we really set out to say, how can we be a better version of Tumi? You know, we have our baseline of product that lasts a long time um, and that can be repaired and, and it has, you know, all the functionality that becomes timeless, but that wasn't enough for us. So the problem really was more of an internal problem to say, how do we become better? How can we do more as a brand? How can we give back, not just to our customers, but to the planet and our future customers and to the people that really care about not only sustainability, but the resources, you know, the carbon emissions um, and how manufacturing, it becomes an important part of making those products. So that was really that kind of kickoff for us where it wasn't, so much of like, oh, this is a trending topic. Let's be a part of the conversation. It was like, hey, you know, people are paying more attention to this. How do we do better? It's like, we've been doing great so far. Let's do more. And that's where, you know, this journey for us really kicked off. That's awesome. It's really cool to hear that it's uh, it's part of your DNA. Um, yeah. I mean, to think that, uh, was I mean, was the term sustainability really a thing uh, when you first started? I mean, really, it was about longevity. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was something that, you know, from day one, it was, it needs to be designed to last, right? right? Or this built to last idea. And when you start looking at luxury and you start thinking of premium products for us, quality and longevity was part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's how we viewed sustainability. I mean, from when you start thinking about, okay, here's the idea, we're going to build a product that never wears out. And if it does, or something happens to it, we're gonna make it very easy to be fixable and keep it on the road. I mean, as a business model goes, some people would be like, yeah, that's crazy. It's about keeping it on the road and out of landfills. Um, and I've worked for other brands in the past um, and I've worked with other people. And to me, this is something that keeps me here and keeps me driven. You know, as we talk about um, how do we reduce landfill? How do we keep things, you know, even from a design standpoint, how do we keep things relevant? Where within fashion, within the world of trends, you have products that become dated very quickly. And from a kind of a, an aesthetic standpoint, they're not in line. Mm. And as we were trained, um, you know, even from the founder and on, he's like, you have to create a design that people will continue to carry, that people will not get tired of. Um, and there's, you know, to me, that's something that reigns true when you talk about being sustainable, because it is that longevity story. But there's so many stories of people handing their bags down 
where it's like, this was my bag and now I'm handing it down to my daughter, uh, you know, or people that are like, uh, they'll send in a bag for repair and we'll tell them, wow, this is really going to be, you know, quite a challenge to repair. And they're like, I don't care. It's like, I met my wife with this bag. This, this is when I started my business 20 years ago, I did it with this bag and I want this bag. And there's this amazing connection to the product. And I love to hear those stories because it means that we're doing something right where they could have just as easily tossed it or they could have said, you know what, I'll just get something new, but it's not. They know that, say, this bag works great or this product works great. I'm going to pass it down to the next generation. So uh, it's been, you know, those, those to me, those stories and those moments are what really continues to drive us. It's like we're doing something right and it's not the norm. It's not the kind of expected path when people talk about sustainability, but it's part of our baseline now. I think that's really important. This planned obsolescence, obsolescence thing is um, a bit of a challenge. And I think it's, um, it, it's not always brought to the forefront because yep. it, it's, I think, I'm not even sure how to maybe think about it. It's almost like it's, it's not obvious. Right. Um, and I, I was speaking with someone else uh, about this idea. Um, she has a, um, a website where she only sells products that are built to last. Right. Um, and she does all sorts of tests and reads the reviews and, um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting because, uh, what, what she was saying is that really the, the part that's most, um, energy intensive is the creation of mm -hmm. the, uh, product from the very first, the very first time right. after that, I mean, repairing, these are little things. And so planned obsolescence is actually incredibly damaging to the environment. Yeah. Um, because if you need to get a new bag every two years or every year or something, if you use it a lot, yeah. and, you know, all that plastic, all the metal, all um, that. Yep. So when you actually design, uh, and I suppose this is kind of leading into your latest, uh, announcement that just came yep. out, uh, earlier this month. Um, so you're, you're designing with sustainability in mind. Um, so yep. can you, can you talk a little bit about specifically what was announced earlier this month? We have a collection called Merge and it's actually made with the most amount of recycled materials and recycled components that we could to continue to meet our standards. Mm -hmm. And this is a big part. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this and why that's important. We also have a collection called Devo, um, which is this trend forward collection that has an amazing feel. It has a, a kind of a, an amazing aesthetic also that's also made with all these recycled components. And also one of our core collections, Alpha Bravo, we've also been layering in this idea of sustainability, not just from the longevity side, or it's also from the material side. And the reason I say that it's made with the most amount of components, um, when we set out on this journey to create these collections, I set a very high standard that if we were gonna use recycled materials, if we were gonna use sustainable materials, we would not have our standards be lowered. This was the big challenge, right? This is something that I think for, for people, when we got into this, they were saying, hey, why haven't you guys done this before? And it's like, well, it took us a long time to develop the fabrics, to develop those materials to pass our test. Um, because there's no point in making a product with sustainable materials who, whose lifespan will be shortened. Right. That That's to me we is defeating saying, yeah. the purpose of this whole thing, especially when our baseline is that longevity, that mm -hmm. life. Uh, span of the product. So when you're saying standards, you mean specifically that it lasts a long time, it's really high quality, it's durable. Exactly. Like our abrasion, our tear, um, you know, color fasteners, everything that we've set up within kind of the TUMI guideline, it still need to hit all those touch points. For me, it didn't matter. It was like, I, I, I don't care if it's, you know, what the material was made of at the end of the day. If we're going to make a, a recycled material, it needs to pass the standard. Mm -hmm. If it didn't pass the standard, we keep testing, perfecting, going back into it. And it wasn't, the answer wasn't, okay, well, we're going to add this additional coding onto it to make it pass. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's the cheat. We're not going there. Right. It's like, it all, it was all kind of inclusive. It was no cutting corners. Um, and to me, it was amazing because it really, you know, as, as we develop materials, it really got us thinking about new ways of developing material, new ways of working with the mills, um, new challenges that we put on the entire uh, kind of development process. It wasn't just like, oh, well, we like this material. Oh, it's made of this. Okay, well, let's use that. It's like, no, okay, how do we use it? Is it passing the test? How do we incorporate it in? And we faced a lot of challenges. You know, we faced challenges where certain components 
of products. We continue to test, continue to test. And we said, guys, look, we know that if, we, if we're going to make this component out of this recycled material, it's not going to pass the test. And that means that the bag will break or bag will fail and say, okay, we're going to continue to learn. We're going to continue to push forward. And that would, is part of what's also in the DNA of the brand is that we continue to evolve the products. It's not just the one and done. You know, that's also the other, the fun part about working here is uh, it, it's this endless development, even on pro things that maybe the, the customer won't see, we're continuing to perfect it, continuing to tweak, continue to make it better and better. So, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about Merge because it's our first soft side collection that's in the sustainability efforts. Just about, uh, you, you said it's um, as like recycled as you can possibly go. What exactly is it that you're recycling? So what we're recycling, so the, the body fabric, the main kind of the main components of the collection are made with recycled materials. So the body fabric, the lining, the webbing that's uh, on the inside, the fillers, uh, um, even the zippers themselves, the zipper tape, the fabric that's on the zipper is, is made with recycled material. But because the zipper teeth right now, the technology isn't there to have the zipper teeth be recycled and be as strong as we need them. We said, that's okay. Let's start with the zipper tape and we're continuing to push and develop, um, in the background. So as much as we could, we, we went that way, but it needed to pass the test. It needed to hit our standards. So you're using your, your, is it diverting plastic bottles? From so we're, diver we're diverting plastic bottles. We're also looking at kind of post-industrial waste um, in the sense of, you know, off cuttings that you may see. Um, you know, we have to be very careful where that those bottles are coming with, how they're handled, how they're being processed. Um, you know, and I think you've spoken with Christine in the past and, you know, working with her and working with our manufacturing setups, really ensuring that we keep consistency um, within that manufacturing side. Now that's also the tricky part. You know, I think a lot of people think, oh, it's recycled. It's like, well, where do you, where do you get the bottles from? How do you process them? How do you convert it back into pellet? And then how do you work with the proper mills to get uh, that turned back into fabric? Wow. Uh, so yeah, so a big part of it is post-industrial waste and also uh, water bottles. That's super cool. So that yeah. that's, that's merge. And you're saying that DeVoe and Alpha Bravo, the other two have slightly different thought processes behind it. Yeah, with, with them as well, they're really more focused on kind of backpacks, soft bags, crossbody bags. And for that, we're really looking at the body fabrics. Now, another tricky component is we know our customers, you know, they look at aesthetic as a feature, right? And so do we. We look at it as if you feel better about how you look or if you're coming into a meeting and you feel confident and you feel more put together, then you will perform better. So when we looked into these kind of more sustainable materials, we, we knew they had to take color. We knew that they're going to have to take print. We know that they're, they can't be dull and lifeless. There has to be depth to the material. So all of these kind of uh, terminologies or way of thinking that's usually classified with more of a fashion house or more of kind of this fashion terminology, we were bringing into something that was quite technical. Hmm. So especially when you start looking at DeVoe or you start looking at an Alpha Bravo, the material itself is carrying all those characteristics. You know, so we're not cutting any corners there where it's like, okay, well, it's recycled and you can only get it in black. It's like, no, we're not going to do that. It's like, you can get it in your blue. You can get it in, of course, your black and your colors and your prints. Um, so, you know, we're, we're quite excited about that where we're able to offer the customer a product line where they don't need to sacrifice. They shouldn't have to sacrifice because of a material that we're using. They shouldn't have to sacrifice in the quality. They shouldn't have to sacrifice in the aesthetic or the functionality. Um, and I think that's where, you know, we really showcase the strength of the brand. I think that's, I think that's exactly it. And I think that's kind of the, um, pr probably the challenge that people who work in sustainability or who keep sustainability in mind, that's what they have is, um, there's this, it's kind of in this weird transition where sustainability is still, uh, relatively young. And, um, you, you know, I think people are saying, well, uh, you know, it, it's sustainable. So you can sort of pass off for it being not the highest quality and it being right. like super expensive, right. even though it doesn't work as well. And, and you can talk about so many different products um, from, yep. from like beauty all the way through bags and things like this. And I think it's awesome that you're, you know, saying from the beginning, it has to meet our standards and we need, yep. we need this to be just another bag that people buy. Oh, and by the way, it's sustainable. Um, right. When I say just another bag, meaning just right. another 
product line. It's like no one can really tell the difference and they feel great wearing it uh, or, or, you know, carrying it with them. Absolutely. That, I mean, the, that, the, customer yeah. should, the, the customer shouldn't get penalized for exactly. you know, tr trying to, you know, make the world we live in a better place. And as a brand, you know, we're trying to become a better version of ourselves and do more. So, you know, to, to say that it's something less than what someone expects from your brand, that's, that's not our approach. Yeah. You know? And I think that it's, it's important that I think other brands as well should think this way. It's like, it's, it's our responsibility as creators, um, as people that are in, you know, the consumer goods product um, category that we have to keep thinking about that and we have to make the difference because it starts with us. You know, mm -hmm. it does start with the manufacturers. Uh, it starts with the people producing the product. And if we can affect change or at least be part of that change, um, our future is going to become, you know, a much more, you know, brighter future. Absolutely. In terms of how you actually begin, um, you know, you said that you had these high standards, you, and you had all of this. I'm, I'm so curious, like, you know, you, you, it, first of all, was this a challenge that you set for yourself or was this kind of something that where Tumi was like, okay, we need to start moving into sustainability? Well, you know, I think we, we've been like dabbling within the kind of aspect of recycled materials and looking at uh, alternative materials. You know, we, we really kind of dig deep. That's one of the things that we're known for um, as a brand. Mm -hmm. And I think in the past, we've always hit that wall of the durability of the materials. That's always been kind of the sticking point. And then mm -hmm we decided to shift our conversation and say, okay, we know that that's going to be a challenge. We know, we already know that going into it. So now let's start working the problem and saying, okay, if that's the challenge, let's talk to our mills. Let's talk to, you know, all of our supply chain and say, this is what we want to do. How do we get there? You know, what is it that we need to do to get to that level that it will pass our test? And that to me was the shift for us, where as opposed to us getting to the road and being like, okay, it's not passing the test. We said, uh-uh. We know we're, we're already there. Let's figure out how to get over that hump. And as soon as we got there, you know, the process was quite intensive. You know, it's multiple rounds of tests, even from just a fabric standpoint. Um, and we would test and test and test and, you know, find disappointments, find subtle wins. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you know, it's one of those magic moments where we look at the fabric and everyone's like, wow, it looks great. It feels great. Is it passing the test? It's passing all the tests. How are the costs? The costs are great. And we're saying, let's get, let's build some product now and get it into the hands of real consumers. And that's where we started. We have like these test pilots that traveled the world and they beat the heck out of the bags. And it was fantastic to see. And people loved it. People were like, I'm trying to kill the bag and I can't. And I'm like, that's what, that's why we have you here, <laughs> you know? Um, and the other great part about it was everything that the brand was about, about like the repairability side and how we go about, you know, like our zipper pullers and keeping the bags on the road, it stayed intact, you know? So now you have this kind of great baseline and we've just added in this amazing story, right? And we were able to, you know, execute it and communicate it out to our customers and they really appreciated it. It was like, awesome, here's an additional feature I'm getting and it didn't cost me more and I didn't have to sacrifice anything. Yeah, that's really cool. And with those with those consumers, are they how are they feeling about you know the fact that they're buying or or using something that they know is sustainable? Is that something that's that they're uh, that's popular in general amongst your um, amongst your audience and your your customers? You know, I think when we started kind of communicating that out, our customers really appreciated that. And I think they, they were expecting it from us, you know, as they know us about our innovation and they know us about for kind of our, our different materials that we do. So they they created it, it resonated with them um, and they gravitated towards it, especially when we told them that, hey, it's, you know, it's as good as the standard, you know, it's, it's not going to be any less. They were like, yeah, of course. I mean, it was like in our own heads, we were like struggling so hard to get there. But for them, they're like, of course, I'm, that's what I expect from you. And I'm like, perfect. Cause that's what you're going to get, you know? That's uh, so awesome. Yeah. So we were, we were excited to give it, um, you know, to present it and we're continuing this journey. You know, it wasn't, this isn't something that we're looking at as a one and done. Um, this isn't something that we see as kind of this hype play where it's like, Oh, it's popular now. So let's engage with it. And then, you know, in two months we'll do something else. It's like, no, now the idea of that sustainable materials in the thread of the DNA of the brand, we're continuing to expand it. You know, I think when we first started, it was quite small. And now you can see it's 
probably in our second largest collection at the brand, which is mm. Bravo, um, which was a huge step for us as a brand. And then when we were able to get it in travel, it expanded into soft travel as well. So um, it just keeps growing. The idea is, you know, it's infectious. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. And I think, I think it's really cool if, if, if the people expect it and, you know, they're, they want it and they're happy with it. And I think, it, you know, it's such a win-win because, uh, first of all, Toomey wins for, for being, uh, yeah. for leading the way and for, for paving the road, um, you know, because Toomey is a big brand um, and they're, you're able to really make big changes. Um, yeah. And then also consumers win because they feel good and, and they get to vote with their dollar about yep. what, you know, what kind of products they're supporting. And so if they don't have to use any sort of virgin materials and they're diverting uh, plastic from the from landfills in the ocean, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. Everyone wins, yep. including the environment. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. There's a few, um, there's kind of a few things that, that to me really keeps in mind when it comes to sustainability. And that's, uh, you have your thriving supply chain, as you call it, then there's the carbon action yeah. and people focused. Um, and I, I'd love to learn a little bit about each one of those. So the, uh, the thriving supply chain, um, su supply chain is really interesting in general because oftentimes, it, especially when it's a um, complex supply chain, it can be, there's not very much transparency there um, when things are being moved and, you know, you're using materials from all over the world. Right. So how, um, how do you ensure that, um, that you meet to me standards of fair and responsible business as, as it says? You know, I think for us, when we started out on this journey, you know, one of the things that we do is we have great relationships with our manufacturers. You know, these are manufacturers that we've used for many years that, um, have supported the brand, have been willing to go above and beyond. So when we said, hey, we, w this is what we're doing as a brand, mm -hmm. we brought them in from the very beginning. I and see. we said, look, this is important to us, right? Uh, and it's kind of like talking to your family, you know? It's like, hey, guys, this is what we're going to do as a family. You know, we're going to change these, you know, some habits. We're going to do better. We're going to do more. Um, and when we started talking to them, they immediately we're on board. And that became this additional, how we, you know, go through the manufacturing process, how we're delivering product, how we're getting materials shipped, um, you know, the, the, you know, looking at the carbon emissions of manufacturing, ensuring that we don't have obsolete material, like every little step of the way across the board, we were looking at it. And for us, you know, we have a fantastic um, sourcing department and we have a fantastic kind of manufacturing side that continue to work with them. So even if it's about, um, you know, the type of lighting that they're using at the factories, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, how the, you know, the factory workers are, you know, being encouraged or how they're being, you know, addressed throughout the day. It's, it's all part of it. It's not just about, hey, we're making this product and we're going to use X material to make this product. And that's the story, right? It became the entire journey that we were on, um, even to the point where it's the stores at the store level where it's like all of our lighting changed to LED to reduce, uh, you know, energy oh. use, to have longevity. Um, as we're looking at packaging, the same thing. As we're looking at our own offices, you know, where there's no plastic bottles within the offices, you know, where we had done these shifts um, at the granule level. So I think it was, it's that important to us as a brand that we really started to push forward. Um, and then, you know, again, when we start looking at manufacturing and the transit of product, that gets looked at. How does it arrive at the store? How do we kind of minimize the amount of shipping time, the amount of trucks that are being used? How do we kind of maximize uh, these efficiencies? So it's been, it's been pretty amazing, you know, wow. where we start with like one tiny little seed and all of a sudden there's a forest, um, <laughs> but it's a beautiful forest. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and so are you involved in all of these conversations in terms of, you know, how, uh, for, for instance, the packaging um, and, and the way it looks and, and where the materials come from? Is that uh, part of your process in terms of the actual design and direction? I mean, we, we have an amazing team. I mean, it's the, the great part about to me, it's not, you know, I'm lucky enough to be here to be able to speak to you, you know, uh, and talk, be able to talk to you about the product and talk to you about different also, we have an amazing team where we all get together and we say, okay, what is the challenge? What's the goal? How do we get there? Uh, and then start off on that goal. And a lot of times it takes, it takes longer than, you know, some people may think. 
um, because we're looking at it at a global scale, right? We're not just looking at it and saying, okay, this is just going to be for North America and that's it. It's like, no, anything we do has to be global. Um, and we start off with that mission and then we start working with all of our partners, you know, our sourcing partners, our product management partners, our teams in Asia, our teams in Europe, our teams in Latin America, North America. Um, and we all come together to ensure that the decisions we're making are going to resonate, right? And to keep them informed of, hey guys, this is coming. Know that we're on this mission. So if anyone hears any additional information that can help us, let's add it in there. Hmm. Um, and you know, it's it's a great partnership. We have great partners internally. We have great partners as you know globally. So you know, everyone contributes. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I think that's fantastic, and it's. Um it's really cool that it's such a, it feels like it's a family and you're yeah. all working together towards this one, this one mission. Oh, yeah. um, and from the point of view that there's this, this third uh, idea of the sustainability, which is people focused. Yeah. Um, and I think when I first started learning about sustainability and under, understanding how, um, you know, how, how it's all involved, I never, I always just considered rather that sustainability is all about the environment. Um, yeah. And I think people can sometimes be, forgotten. And at least I know just honestly for myself that I never really considered people as part of the process. Um, and I, and I suppose, uh, from my point of view, you know, based on what you've seen and, and the supply chains and, and mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that you, you do travel around the world a lot, how important is that element of being focused on people and providing, you know, your, the Tumi team with safe working environments and ensuring that there is opportunities and there's culture and support, et cetera, et cetera. How, what would you say from your experience, you know, the importance of, of all of that from, I suppose, a sustainable, whatever that means, yeah. uh, point of view. I mean, I think for us, it's always, you know, as I mentioned, we're a global brand, right? We're appealing to so many different people in so many different countries from so many different cultures. Yeah. So as we really start to, you know, look internally, right. Um, I always say that, to me is great at listening to our customers hmm. okay? and our customers aren't just those outside of the to me walls our customers are also our employees you know they're the people that work for to me you know we work for them and you know allowing to have transparency allowing access you know to you know um, upper management and how we communicate and these missions that we're on where it becomes more of a conversation with the employees it becomes more of a conversation with them it allows them to be part of the final product and whether that product is a culture shift whether that product is how we go about doing business the conversations that we're having um where we should where we should be doing better as a brand um where we're succeeding as a brand you know we're always connecting with our own employees to understand that and i think that's something where um you know other brands they may say okay from this level down no need to listen from this level up that's where I, and it's it's very different you know I, I say quite a bit it's like a good idea is a good idea and it doesn't matter if it comes from the mailroom or the boardroom a good idea is a good idea and that's the one what that's the one we should follow and that's the one we should embrace and keep pushing so i think for for Tumi, you know we're continuing to listen to our employees we're continuing to listen to our staff um you know as they as ideas kind of trickle up about not only sustainability but how we become a better brand we're listening and we're executing on that. Um, and to me, it's like you said, it's kind of this missing component on, on the story side. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of sustainability revolves around here's this material and it used to be made from this. And now we have this new thing and it's like, okay, but what about everything else? Like, how did it get there? How did that, who cut the plastic bottles? How did we get the plastic bottles to the factory? You know, it's like, who's handling those bottles? How do we ensure their safety? You know, how do we ensure the fact that, hey, um, shipping product this way could be done in a very different way? And so it's it's important for us to keep listening because we're learning so much. Um, and that's also why we continue to share the plan that the, that the business has with all of our regions, because we're gathering that information back to, from them. We want to understand also, you know, how the product is being perceived. You know, we want to make sure that hey, this is a, a huge opportunity for us that we're, we're doing better. How do we communicate that out? Um, and how do our, um, you know, partners and the people that, that are working for the brand, how are they feeling about this? So it's, you know, it's a lot of communication. It's a lot of, you know, input that comes in. 
And then it's this continued process of, you know, we're on our own journey. We're trying to perfect our journey. Um, so it's, it's been fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's um, a good idea is a good idea. Um, yep. I, I really like that because <laughs> sometimes it's, um, you know, especially when you're, you're working on maybe some of the more theoretical sides. Um, right. Like you're saying, you know, there's a certain level where people uh, at, at some companies, it's like anything below this. Um, right. And it makes you out of touch when you only focus on a certain level and up because Absolutely. there are people who are working, uh, you know, at the factory and they see the actual process. And in theory, it should work this way. Right. But in practice, this is how it's actually done. And there's no way for you to know that unless you actually are willing to listen to the people who are there and who are handling the materials and actually working. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, throughout my career, one of my, you know, the fondest memories in, in development has been at the factory level. You know, um, you know, what, as I work with designers, I always tell them, you need to know how to sketch. And they're like, why? It's like, I can just do it on the computer. I'm like, because when you're at the factory, and you can't speak the same language as your partner that's creating this product for you. How do you communicate it? He's going to tell you, hey, doing that takes me three hours. But if we tweak it and do it this way, it'll take me one hour. You know, that's a huge win in regards to kind of efficiencies and partnering with people and really understanding that manufacturing process. Um, and I mean, just... Yeah, I mean, over over the past, you know, over the decades of kind of working with them, it's been fantastic because they totally get it. They totally understand what mission we're on and they're, they're constantly working for us. And, you know, simple things where they're presenting ideas to us as well, you know, where they'll say, hey, guys, check this out. Yeah. We did this and it saves this much material and we're able to do this, this and this. And we're like, awesome. Great. Like, let's go forward with that. So, it, you know, I, I do feel that it's. You know, I think family is a big part of the, the word that we use. And it's not just the family that's at that corporate level, but it's all of our partners around the world um, and kind of the extended family, even, you know, at the store level, where they're there and they're listening to the customers mm -hmm. and they provide that feedback back um, and we're able to listen to them and, and kind of execute on ideas. Yeah, I think that's, that's really important. I mean, you know, especially, I guess, if you tie it back to environmental sustainability, you know, if there's, um, like you're saying, if, um, if someone is, if you care for people, and you show them that they matter, and that they're important, and you, you give them those opportunities and the support, etc, and all of these safe working environments, then they know that they matter. And there, are, people are just willing to contribute in that case. Yeah. And uh, it really does help in so many ways um, because, yeah, if they can figure out a way to save 20% uh, more material and then you can use that, um, then yep. ultimately you're... Absolutely. That's environmentally, even more environmentally friendly. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's, those days are really amazing when we're, you know, we're just sitting there and this idea just kind of ends up in a meeting and they're like, oh, so our manufacturer was thinking this, this, and this. And we're all like, that's amazing. Let's go for it. Yeah. You know, yeah, and being know. able to you know, execute on those ideas very quickly um, and affect change. And I think that's the other part that's important is sometimes the conversations that come up are just to start us thinking differently and, and thinking yeah. in, in a new way. We may not have the answer. We may not have, you know, a, a direct path there, but it definitely plants that seed for us to say, hey, we can be doing better. How do we get there? Is it a year? Is it two years? Is it five years? Is it 20 years? Um, and a lot of times there are challenges that get posed, whether by me or by others to say, I would like to do this, this, and this. Yeah. And they'll say, wow, we don't know how to do that, but we're going to find out. And they do. And they go out and they, they're, they gather the information and they, and they come back to the brand and they say, hey, guys, this is what it'll take to get there. Mm. You know, do we want to do it? Do we want to engage? When's the right time to do it also? So, yeah, it's a, you know, to me, to me is a very unique place in that sense where it's uh we we try to we try to affect change very quickly and we try to move quite quickly as well. Speaking of time, how long did you, did it take to get to the point where you thought, okay, we now have this is as perfect as it's going to be, uh, and we're happy with this level. Obviously, you'll you'll always continue improving, and there's technically no such thing as perfect. Right. Um, but how long did it take from that moment where you're like, you know, we're going to do something really special, and now you have a completed product. Yeah, I mean, I think with this one in particular, it, it was about two years. And a, and a big chunk of that was, you know, the, the testing and the retesting and putting it on people's backs as they traveled and, and you know, having it on the road. Um, 
and ensuring that it was hitting that standard. You know, that was the big part. Like we had things that were it's like aesthetically, they look great, right? On paper, they look great. Right. But without actually getting beat up, without someone checking it in, you know, on, a, you know, a four leg journey where it's totally overstuffed and totally like just, we didn't have that kind of like, okay, this is ready for market because we wanted to ensure that it was our best foot forward. Um, and then we got to the point, it's like, we're starting our journey. Let's start it. We're ready to, to, to get there. We have the confidence in the brand, in the collection, um, in the messaging. Let's move it forward. And now it's that really was kind of that little snowball at the top of the hill starting to roll down. And we're like, we went from this small capsule to expanding it out, you know, to men's and women's, to a, our second largest collection, to travel, then looking even beyond and saying, okay, what do we do at the store level? What do we do at the corporate level? How do we, you know, talk to our people? Um, and now it's just kind of, it, it's ingrained in the DNA. And, you know, I feel blessed that um, I've been a part of that history of the brand to just say, hey, we have this great baseline of longevity, of durability, and now we're looking at the materials mm -hmm. and just kind of this other way of, of um, kind of bringing things to market. Yeah, super yeah. cool. What about um I, the the testing part? Uh, sounds yeah. so interesting. Um, oh yeah, I bet <laughs> I can only imagine it. It sounds like a lot of fun. What, uh, if you're allowed, I mean, or if you can, what um what are some of the tests other than I mean, so you you've painted a great picture. You yeah. overstuff it with a bunch of things, and then you make it yeah. go on crazy journeys. Are there any like yeah. really wacky tests that you do to really? Oh yeah. Or... I mean, as a you know, as a designer, it's uh it's kind of this thing when you see this, you know, you develop a design and this, this goes not just for the sustainable, right. But all products that we do, you create this beautiful uh, piece and, you know, every detail has been refined and they say, okay, time to destroy it. And, you know, they're, they're um, really kind of aggressive tests. You know, um, we have this giant um, kind of system where we, we overstuff it with weight. Um, and then we, we literally tumble the bag at high speeds um, to really start simulating what five years of high use would be like. I see. Um, and then, you know, we overstuff the product and we do handle jerk tests. We do tear tests. We, you know, are dropping it on every corner um, because, again, now, you know, the conversations I have and how I speak to this is really about five months ago when we were all on the road and, and you know, we were really, and we'll get back there eventually, but... Um, we know that traveling can be very tough, you know, mm -hmm. as products are getting, you know, thrashed around. If you're going from negative 40 degrees all the way down to 150, you know, when you're flying to Dubai and now you're on the tarmac for three hours, that cargo hold, the, uh, this shifts in, in temperatures changes. So we test temperature, we test water repellency, we're testing tear strength, we're testing abrasion. Um, and, you know, the idea is to make it as indestructible as possible. But we also design in and we engineer, we engineer in failure in certain components so that the bag can stay on the road. For, for example, our zipper pools, you know, our zipper puller itself, we've designed in um, at a certain amount of torque, the zipper puller will break. And we want the zipper puller to break instead of the zipper itself. Because if the zipper breaks, you'll have to send the bag back in, we'll have to restitch it. But if the zipper puller breaks, we have an amazing system where you can just go into a store and they can reattach a zipper puller like in two minutes, maybe 30 seconds, you know, I mean, and then you're back on the road. And for us, this is fantastic because I think when we want them to know, hey, just bring it into the store and we'll fix it. And it's not a painful process of, okay, here we go. I'm going to have to wait. It's like, nope, here you go. you're in, you're out. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, I've done those repairs myself as I've been in stores, just kind of hanging out. Oh, wow. Um and I think that's also a big part of that difference where we're actually looking at from the test, we see where a failure could happen. And we say, okay, if this failure is going to happen, how do we get the customer back on the road or how do we design it to bend and not break? Um, so yeah, it's a, it's like engineering a car more so than just a bag, you know, uh, it, it becomes really uh, kind of this huge crash test that we go through and really understand where to put in, uh, re, like reinforcement and where to kind of remove some of that reinforcement when needed. Yeah. You, sometimes um, give is such an important part um, rather than being strong. You need to actually just be soft. Um, you got it. You got it. People yeah, forget about that. <laughs> I love that, uh, that idea of like 
purposefully build, building in failures in order for something much smaller and less, uh, for something trivial to break rather than for the full exactly. thing to break. Exactly. Um, yeah. So Victor, thank you so much for your time. This is so cool. Yeah. I, I yeah. love the work you're doing and I, I love that. Thank you. Um, as you said, you know, Tumi has been, um, has always had sustainability and durability and longevity in its, in its DNA. And now you're just taking that to the complete ultimate level and, and, and you keep going. Um, so if, if people want to buy a sustainable Tumi bag, one of these that are made from, from recyclable materials, from recycled material, materials, rather, I should say, uh, what exactly should they look for? You know, I think anytime that you're looking to buy um, any kind of sustainable material uh, product from anyone, it's like really like research the company, you know, understand, you know, what the materials are, how they've been sourced. Um, and also, you know, educate yourself on the different types of recycled materials that are out there. There's so many um, different types of materials, anything from ocean plastic to post-consumer mm. uh, waste to, you know, materials made from organics. Um, and understand kind of what the expectation is of those materials, hmm. because there are some materials that are designed to only last a certain amount of time. And I think that as a customer, the more you know, you kind of set yourself with those expectations. Um, that's something that I learned kind of on this journey that not everything is created equal in this world. Um, and I would always say, you know, ensure that you buy the product that's going to last a long time. You know, ensure that you buy product that's going to have longevity because the, the longer it can stay in your life, the longer it can stay used, that's a huge win across the board, you know, absolutely. even beyond just uh, from the materials it's made from. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really good points. And yeah. specifically with Tumi bags, which, um, which ones keep all of those factors in mind? They're, um, it's the Merge. Uh, yeah, have... Merge, DeVoe, and Bravo. Um, those were really where we started out in focusing all of our efforts. Um, and, you know, more to come. It's like there, we're, we're never we're never kind of just stopping and and kind of enjoying the moment. We're always kind of pushing the limits and continuing to push the limits. Excellent. So for anyone who's interested in buying uh, a fantastic bag that can clearly handle a lot um, <laughs> and is sustainable, um, Tumi yeah. is the place to go. And and again, if if someone just goes to the to the Tumi website, they'll be able to see the Merge, Devo, and Bravo collections. Absolutely. Um, and what I love on the website, it just says recyclable. Uh, in yep. big letter letters above each bag, so you yep. can't really miss it. Just keep it uh, simple. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no need to guess. So, and if people do want to want to buy a Tumi bag or learn more about Tumi and sustainability, where's the best place for people to uh, to go and and check it all out? Yeah, Tumi.com is you know the, the best place. You know, there you can see all of our products. You can get all the information about the products. Uh, you get a kind of a, a very clear picture about um, what we're doing and all the efforts that we're going. And you know, beyond sustainability as well. So please visit us. Uh, we, we love talking about the product and we love kind of bringing the best products to our customers. Excellent. Well, yeah, tumi.com, uh, again, keeping it simple, T-U-M-I. Yep. And uh, Victor, thank you so much for your time. Really great to speak uh, with you. Daniel, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's been great uh, chatting with you. Likewise. All, All right. right, take care. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, give us a five-star rating. And also, please subscribe, whether on your podcast app or on YouTube. And that way you can be the first to know about new episodes. Thank you very much and talk to you soon.